does it take to paint a portrait? This is probably the question about painting portraits that I get asked more times by a budding artist than anything else. And then the second most popular question is, what colors do you use for skin tones? Well, the second answer could take all day, but I'll try to throw in a few quick tips along the way. To answer the first question, I decided to do a painting and document every time I picked up a brush and actually worked on the painting. I didn't count the many hours that I stood back and studied what I had done before, particularly each time I thought it was finished and had to go back and make just one more little adjustment. The basic drawing took only 45 minutes on a 22 by 28 canvas because I project the photo right onto the canvas and trace a simple sketch to use as a foundation. This gets everything exactly where it belongs and saves mountains of time I would spend making drawings by eye and spending hours to fix mistakes. Here you see I've thrown in a rough coat on the background using acrylic paint. There's no real blending needed. Acrylic dries quickly and cleaning up is easy. Total time so far is an hour and a half and I use raw umber, burnt umber, and cad red light. I switched to oil paint for the shirt and a few face shadows using just burnt umber thinned with a lot of painting medium. You can see I don't spend a lot of time on these areas. I'm trying to get the canvas covered with values that are just close to what they will be in the final painting. For the face and a little piece of the arm, I used only transparent red oxide and a lot of medium, plus some Payne's gray for the white of the hair. This took only an hour because I was just laying in flat, transparent areas of color, like painting with numbers. Okay, now that the canvas is completely covered, I can get down to really painting. Back to the background with oil paint, thicker paint, and very little medium. I used cad red light, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and black. The toughest part was getting the gradual change from a reddish brown in the upper left corner down to a full black in the lower right corner. I didn't want it to be a completely smooth transition, just slight undulations along the way for interest. I got a little crazy here and played around with some detail in the eye. Really too soon for this, but I was having fun and wanted to play around a bit. The shirt was a little tougher with all the rolls and creases in the material. I used raw umber, burnt umber, yellow ochre, and a few black accents. Now for the fun part the head and neck. Starting with the dark shadows and forehead, I used cad red light, alizarin crimson, sap green, and cad orange, cerulean blue, burn umber, and a few tiny black accents. Of course, almost everything had some white added. The light source was a warm light, so I used a warm red like cad red in the light areas and a cool red like alizarin in the shadows. Okay, let's talk about skin tone. Almost any primary mixed with its complement will work when you add white. I'm sure that's news to a lot of people. Here, red mixed with its complementary green will work when mixed with white. Now here's a tip. When a source light is warm, the shadows will be cool. The reverse is true also. A cool source light will make warm shadows. I'm mixing cad red light with sap green, then slowly adding white. This gives me a kind of pinkish skin tone. Here's a cat orange mixed with magenta, giving a skin tone with a different cast. Now here I mixed lemon yellow with dioxazine purple. Hey, that didn't work. It gave me green. Yellow and blue make green, right? Well, that must mean there was not enough red in the purple. So let's add a little red to the mix. Bingo! a skin tone. Obviously, I've only scratched the surface here. Experiment. Find out for yourself what happens when you mix colors. Okay, back to business. Next came the nose and left side of the face. Same colors as before. Cad red light, sap green, and burnt umber. With a tiny bit of cat orange here and there. And of course, lots of white. The chin and mustache area still use the same colors with Payne's gray for the mustache in the shadows. I had to be careful with the eye on the right side. It's mostly in shadow, so a lot of the shape had to be imagined by the viewer. 
there's usually not a lot of detail in the shadow areas anyway. The forehead is a relatively large area with a lot of subtle changes as the light rakes across all the little bumps and curves. It's not usually one big flat slab of the same color and value, so look carefully for the changes. Finally, time for an overall tweaking of the entire face to make sure all the little shapes and values are working together. It took me almost 19 hours to get to this point, but I'm sure I'll keep looking at this painting and finding little things to fix for at least the next couple of weeks. When do I stop? Here's where your background of hundreds of paintings comes into play. It's a simple formula. The more paintings you've done, the better the next one will be. And you'll know it when you see it. There's just no getting around that. Check out my website at this address, and if you're serious about learning how to paint portraits, get my DVD titled, How I Did It. You can order it from the site. It will definitely save you time in your quest to becoming a great artist. So have fun painting.